Happy Station Show, calling listeners everywhere, everywhere. Well, hello, friends. Very nice to have you joining me for uh, a little while. Now, usually our little talks concern radio. This one actually doesn't concern radio. It is not even connected with radio at all. Now, you're probably wondering, why do I have beef and chicken here? Well, I'll explain why. Um, those who've been following me on Facebook know that one of my dogs, Boppy, has lymphoma. Lymphoma is a type of cancer that is actually quite common among certain breeds of dogs, uh, like, well, she's a golden retriever. That's one of the breeds. German Shepherds, Labradors, and, and other breeds as well. She's nine years old, so she's going through chemotherapy right now. Now, why is this here? Um, there's a lot of debate going on uh, amongst pet owners and also veterinarians and people in that profession whether or not it's good to give dogs a raw food diet. I look at it this way. If you can find me a dog that says, oh, I'm getting a little hungry. I'm going to go and cook something. Well, I will pay you a million dollars. Dogs just do not cook. Um, dogs can eat, for example, chicken that is slightly spoiled that if we as humans eat it, we would just get really ill. Dogs, on the other hand, are completely, completely different. Same with cats and, 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 and all animals as well. Now, the dry food industry is quite interesting. Um, I should mention right now, of course, I don't want to put all the dry foods into the same category because there are some out there that actually are, are really high quality and are really good. But too many of them, too many of them are really bad quality. Now, just try to picture it this way. Just imagine yourself, and for one year, for one year, the only thing you could eat was dry food. Imagine what that does to the kidneys. Imagine what it does to the liver. We don't do that, right? And it's the same thing for dogs. Now, dry food, yes, I feed my monsters who are standing around me right now dry food from time to time, but maybe only once a week, and it's really more as just a, a quick snack as more than anything else. A lot of people say, oh, dry food is just, it's easier. Well, easier for who? It's easier, of course, for the dog owner because they just have to go buy it, scoop it into a bowl, and that's it. But when I show you what I'm going to make right here, you're going to think this is also easy. And it's actually not, it's a little bit more expensive than dry food. But I think considering, um, you know, these, the dogs that I have, or the dogs that you may have, they're part of the family. I mean, would you give, say, your, one of your, your child just absolute rubbish food, you know? So anyway, it's actually quite easy. Um, it's easier, of course, if you have some type of food processor. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna take you a, a really long time. So look, here I've got um, just some beef. And uh, one of them is just kind of glaring at me right now. Now, this is just, it's not a really high quality beef. This is like just like stew meat. So it's the kind of thing like if, if you cook, you have to cook it for a long time, otherwise it's really tough. And you know, another myth that people will have is that, oh, if you give raw meat to a dog, it'll make them more aggressive. Um, in my life, I have never come across that. And I think that's just one of the myths that, that go along with owning dogs that's been around for a long time. Um, dogs do not get more aggressive from eating raw beef. They get aggressive because of stupid owners. And that's the reality. Stupid owners who really um, don't know how to train their dogs. Now, when it comes to feeding time, you can't see them because they're on the floor right now. Uh, there's schoolboy Boppy and Ginger. And they're, all, they're actually quite, quite big dogs. Um, one of them doesn't like the sound of this thing, so if he does bark, you just have to ignore him, which is what I do all the time. So you just put it into the food processor, just like that. Three, four pieces. Um, of course, depending on the dog that you have, you have to give them, of course, a different amount. Uh, but they're more or less all the same size. The smallest dog I have is 22 kilograms, the largest is 30. And the one in between, if I can call her the mid-range dog, is 27. So all you do, just put it in the food, presser, food, food processor like that. And just get it all chopped up.
It doesn't have to be too fine. Now, the only reason why I chop it up into smaller pieces, because one of my dogs is a, a little bit fussy. And uh, she doesn't like eating anything that's, that's way too big, so she just won't touch it. So you just put it into the bowl like that. Actually, I should take this out. It's a lot easier. Take it in the bowl like that. That's one. And I'll do the second one. Always wash your hands because you don't want to get um, blood juice on your counter or anything. So just chop up this one. And then I'll show you something that I add to it after I finish these three. It really takes... There you see, I told you. He's going to bark. And uh, just put it in there. You're going to get this in a moment. Don't worry. And put it in like that. Let's do the other one. There's the rest here. There you go. Two more pieces. Oh, I've got two more. Yeah, so I can give them another, another piece each. Yes, I know you're all getting very excited. Like I said, this is actually quite, quite easy to do. It really takes no time. And um, you probably only hear the machine right now. Uh, my vet, where uh, is at the Taiwan National University Veterinarian Hospital, it's one of the best veterinarian hospitals here in Taiwan, uh, told me that because she's going through chemotherapy, she should be eating a very high protein diet, which is exactly what I've been feeding her now uh, for, for almost, oh my God, how many months? I think almost uh, three months. And the high protein is good for their white blood cell count and also the platelets. Now, the reason why I have to give her this kind of diet for a while, because first of all, she is going through chemotherapy and anybody who, let's say, has known somebody who's gone through cancer before will know that chemotherapy basically is, is poison. You're just poisoning the system. Okay, so we've got the meat here. Getting back to this. Um, what I also like to do, also put some chicken. If you've got a food processor, just cut it in little pieces like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, four chicken breasts. Uh, grind it up and then just put it uh, put it on top of them um, now some people are thinking wait a second that's a lot you're giving your dogs right now well uh, Bobby like I said is going through chemotherapy so we have to keep her weight up when she started the first cycle she lost I think in the first two weeks she lost about five kilograms and her blood her, her white cell blood count was really low and the platelets were low so they had to reduce the amount of steroids and the other medications that she was getting. Um, and the lim lymph nodes were starting to, to, to grow back a little bit. Uh, it wasn't until we in I increased her food, where she gained the weight, where now everything is, is going back to normal. Let's chop it up. And then lift that off. The food processor I'm using, by the way, is a nice one. It's um, called Bamix, made in Switzerland. I take it off the blade. And uh, it chops up stuff really fine. So there it is. And you just put that with the meat. You're getting a little less because you're smaller. And I know you're just going to stand around here. Go, mix it up. There we go for you. Um, also, dogs that eat this kind of diet will not gain as much weight as, let's say, dogs that will eat uh, dry dog food. And that's only because dry, dry dog food does have a lot of uh, things in it that will make dogs um, gain weight. So there we go. That's easy. All done. 
and uh, now I can feed them. So, like I said, if you have an older dog, I would suggest you, because they're getting a lot more protein than they would from, from dry food. Uh, and, and by the way, you can also add other things to it. Sometimes I'll add um, one egg each. Uh, something also that's also uh, really good to add is a little bit of fish oil or even olive oil. You can even put olive oil. That, that is totally fine. Uh, just don't put any salt or pepper or anything like that. Or don't, of course, don't put any onion. But uh, one clove of garlic is also something that you can add and your pet will be happy and healthy and will have a lot more life and a lot more energy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little spiel that I was doing and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Hello, hello, it's the Happy Station Show. Call in listeners everywhere. Everywhere. It's your station of smiles across the miles, spreading happiness You're welcome to the world's largest happy family. So hello everyone, hello everywhere, from Alaska to Mexico. Mexico. Come and join in the swing and have a merry fling with the Happy Station family.